This video is going to look at how you actually get web pages from your iPad uh, and save them as PDFs or print them. Now here's a page on the iPad that I want to keep. I don't necessarily want to print it uh, on paper, but I want to save it as a PDF so I can look at it uh, at another time offline or annotate it. Now I can do that using Chrome. So Chrome is a browser that is available for all platforms, Mac, Windows, and for all mobile devices. So you can download a mobile version of the Chrome browser for your iPad or your iPhone or for your Android tablet. So in order to get this to work, there are a number of steps that we're going to go through in this video. Uh, first of all, you need to download and install the Chrome browser for your computer, uh, whether it's a Mac or it's a Windows machine. Uh, create a Google account if you haven't got one and sign into that Google account. So it could be a Gmail account or Google Drive. Install Google Drive on your computer. And that is also available for any platform. Uh, download and install the mobile apps for Chrome and Google Drive for your mobile device. So I've got them installed on the iPad. To print, um, you need to set up something called Google Print. So uh, we'll look at how you actually add printers, USB printers that are connected to your computer to Google Print, which will allow you to print from your iPad or phone anywhere. And finally, uh, add an extension into Chrome. So it's called the Chrome to Mobile extension, which allows you also to send web pages from Chrome on your computer to a mobile device, phone or tablet. All right, so you have Chrome installed on your computer. You also need to sign in to a Google account. So the address there is accounts.google.com. If you've got an account, sign in. If you haven't got one, sign up for a Google account. So let's just pause while I sign into mine. And this will take you straight into your Google account and your Google profile, um, which you can leave. You don't actually need to be on there now, but I can be in my Gmail, I can be in my Google Drive. You also need to have Google Drive on your computer. Google Drive is the virtual drive which allows you to store files from a computer up into the cloud. So it's your cloud storage with Google. But you need to download Google Drive for your particular computer. So I've got Google Drive installed for the Mac, but you could install it for Windows. And these are the files that I have up in Google Drive. So if I went on to my Finder, and I'm using a Mac, and there is a Google Drive application that you actually download. So over here, download the drive for the Mac. So it's a small application that you install onto your computer, which synchronizes the files that you have on your computer with what is up in the cloud. So in Google Drive on my computer are those files, and they're the same ones that are on the online version of Google Drive. So if I wanted to put in another file from my Finder, say a picture, so let's pick a picture of the cat, and I want to put that into my Google Drive. I'm going to copy it. So I've still got an original on my local drive. Put it into Google Drive. And wait for that to be uploaded. Once it's been uploaded, there will be a green tick next to that file to indicate that that file is now synchronized with Google Drive online. Now, it hasn't at the moment. It's still uploading. And up in the menu bar, there should be something. There it is there, Google Drive. It's completed the sync. You can see up there, sync complete. The file in Google Drive, the image, is here. So it's gone up to Google Drive online. That one should have a tick on it. So if we to go out of it and go back into it, it now has a tick. So they're synchronized. So whatever I put on... Uh, into my Google Drive from my hard drive will be uploaded to my drive online and vice versa. So anything that I, I have in my Google Drive uh, that I send into it from my iPad can be downloaded and opened on my local computer. 
So you need to, to install Google Drive. Install the mobile apps for Google Drive and Chrome. So there's the Google Drive mobile app and you can see it's got the same files in it that I have on the local computer. So there's the Google Drive, it's got exactly the same files there. Uh, with that image, which I just uploaded, the cat, that's there too. So everything is up to date on that one. And also download and install Chrome, Chrome browser. And that's just another browser for looking at the internet. So instead of using Safari that comes built in on the iPad, I could use Chrome as my browser. And it's currently looking at my, my Google Drive, but I could go into uh, any other file that I want, any other page. So it's a, 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 a web page there, home page, any page I want, I can use that as my browser. So install those apps. Oh, you need to set up Google Print as well, Google Cloud Print. And Google Cloud Print will let you print to a connected printer on your computer from any device anywhere. So if I'm out somewhere, I find a PDF on my iPad and I want to print it, I can use Google Print to send it to my printer at home. And when I get home, it will be waiting for me in the printer. Now how to set it up. You need to go into, on, and it works through Chrome, so you must have Chrome installed. Sign into a Google account and have that already done. Then into the settings of Chrome. And scroll down till you get to, well, it's actually in advanced settings. So show advanced settings, scroll down. So you get to Google Cloud Print and you're going to add printers. So any printer that is not an air print printer, and so if you wanted to print natively with the iPad, it needs an air print enabled printer. So HP make a whole lot of those. If you haven't got one of those, then you can add what they call a classic printer. And that's usually a USB printer that's directly connected to the computer that you're using at the time with, with um, Chrome, and you can add that printer in. Any network printers that are on your network will also be added automatically to Google Cloud Print. So I'm on an iMac at the moment. There is uh, no USB printers connected, but I have two network printers, two wireless printers uh, in, the, in, the, in the network. So it should pick up those. So when you... Um, are ready, you add the printers and it will register the printers that are connected to this um, version of Chrome on this iMac and it'll be able to print to those. <clears throat> and then you can go into manage your printers. So the printers are now registered and manage the, manage the printers and maybe put that up as a bookmark too so you can find it a little bit later. I have done another video on in, uh, setting up, installing, and using Google Cloud Print. So if you have a look in the description, you can have a look at that in a bit more detail. What we're really interested in is just this one, Save to Google Drive. As soon as you set up Google Cloud Print, you install Google Drive, you have Chrome, you've signed into your Chrome account, then you've got access to these things here, Save to Google Drive. When I install Chrome on my iPad, it puts this icon up here so I can print to my iPad using Google Cloud Print. I have a, an Android tablet, Nexus 7, that also has Chrome on it, and the phone has Chrome on it. So as soon as you install Chrome on a mobile device, it automatically adds all of that. These are the two printers. This is a, a laser printer, and uh, uh, this one's a laser printer. This one's the wireless printer. And, and they're also there again, you can notice that they're there again, but they're greyed out, they're offline, because those instances of those computers are connected to the MacBook Pro. And when that's turned on, those printers will be online. So this is sort of setting it all up. I need to get Google Print ready. Uh, so let's look, go back to the iPad. There's really all the, the preparations really done now. Look at a web page. So if I have 
and I have to be in Chrome, so Chrome on the um, iPad, and find a page. So there's a page here on how to play region blocked TV, and it's got a, a lot of information. And I might want to look at that offline later, or I might also want to save it as a PDF file. I don't actually want to print the whole thing out, but I want to save it as a PDF file because that will preserve the formatting of this page. Um, there's a lot of information there, and I want to keep that information. So I want to be able to print that and save it as a PDF. Not actually print it to paper, but print it as a PDF. So on the top right there, there is the settings, and I want to print it. And if I had an air print printer connected, uh, I could print this to paper. My, my Epson printer has a, a printer app, so I could print it to paper. But if I haven't got that, uh, what I really want to do is I'm trying to go paperless, is print to Google Cloud Print. And because it's a web page and I've set up my Google Cloud Print and I have the ability there to select any of these printers. So if I selected my uh, laser printer here, it's going to come up with all the options for that particular printer. And if I, if I tap the print now, it's going to print to this printer and it'll print to paper and it'll be sitting in that printer tray when I want it. So I could be out. Uh, on the road somewhere, I find a page, I print it to that printer, and it will, as long as my, my computer at home is turned on uh, with the printer attached to it, it will print. But I don't want to use paper, I want to save it to Google Drive, which will save this page as a PDF. And you can see it there save your document as a PDF in Google Drive. So, yes, I do save that one. Now I can access that PDF in Google Drive on my iPad once it's saved or when I uh, online so I can go into any any browser. It doesn't have to be Chrome now. I could go into Safari or uh, Internet Explorer, Firefox, and go to my Google Drive account and that file will be there. Or I could save it into another app on the iPad and annotate it. So maybe save it into Goodreader, save it into Adobe Reader and annotate it. It's sending the print job now, and it's, a, it's fairly graphic intensive, this, this um, page, so it's going to take uh, longer than just a normal text page. So we'll come back when it's, sa when it's uh, saved. All right, so that's saved into Google Drive. So if I was to go uh, out of Chrome and find Google Drive on the iPad and open it, that file should be there and there it is there play region block tv nets life pdf so that's the page and because we saved it to google drive that's available in other locations so on the computer in the chrome browser um, going into my google drive and signing into my google account there's the actual file as well so it's up online in the google account uh, it would work whatever browser you're using. So you could be an Internet Explorer and go to Google Drive and it would work. Uh, as I'm on a Mac, let's try it in Safari. Because so far, all the, you know, to actually get pages to print to PDF, you have to be using Chrome. Once the page is there, though, I could go into my Google Drive from Safari. And I should still be able to see it. So anywhere I can access my Google Drive, pause while I sign in. So I'm on Safari in my Google Drive and I can see the file. So it doesn't matter what browser you use, you'll be able to see it. And also because I've got Google Drive on my computer, if I open up my Finder, remember I'm on an iMac, so you might open your documents library on a Windows machine, there's the, the PDF we sent to Google Drive with the green tick indicating that it's been synchronized. Now, once it's in the Google Drive, so if I open up Google Drive on the iPad, and the file is here, so if I hit the arrow, uh, I can delete it if I needed to. 
or tapping that. I can remove it or move it to somewhere else or share it or rename it. Or I could also just open the file and have a look at it in Google Drive or share it to another app. So maybe I want to annotate it. I can open it in Adobe Reader, another app on the iPad. And from there, I can annotate it. So if I wanted to edit that document in Adobe Reader, I can now use the editing tools. So for example, do some circles and whatever I wanted to do. The other thing you can do with, with Chrome is when you have a web page in your browser that you want to read uh, offline in your iPad, but you can use a Chrome extension to actually send a web page to a mobile device. So here's a web page that I'd like to send to the iPad. What I need to do is add an extension to Chrome. And the easiest way to do that is just go to a new tab and go to the web store. Now, all of these things that you see on the screen here are just extensions that I've added to Chrome. And, and Chrome has added them to a new tab. So uh, all the things I use the most, I've, I've actually put onto the, to the page here. And there's a, another page as well, games or whatever. So to go to the web store, and the extension that we're looking for is called Chrome to Mobile extension. And if you haven't got any extensions in Chrome, this is where you'll get them from the web store. So you just search for them for whatever you want, and whenever you find something, add to Chrome. Uh, so the one I'm looking for, and some of the extensions will go into the, to the tabs, the other extensions will go up here into this uh, bar here. So they're, they're all extensions. This one unblocks uh, sites allow me to allow me to watch region block television. This one's Stumbler, so stumble upon uh, for the Plex Media Center for one password. Uh, makes all the YouTube videos go um, high, high definition automatically. They're all Plex extensions. Uh, so to find the one we're looking for, it's Chrome Mobile to, I think it's called Mobile to Web or something. Chrome to Mobile, that's what it's called. Chrome to Mobile, Chrome to Mobile Better. So you put that into the web store, into the search, and then when it comes up, that's the one we want, I'm going to add it to Chrome. And it gives you a chance to opt out, but I will add it. That's This is the little icon we're going to be looking for. And as soon as that extension is added, it will appear up here. Add. So whenever there's a web page on your computer that is able to be sent to a mobile device, you will see that in the menu bar. Now to see all your extensions in Chrome, it's in Window, Extensions. They all go into there so that you're able to manage them from that place there. So if I wanted to do, delete one, I could just click the trash. If I wanted to disable it for a while, I can just deselect the tick. Uh, there it is there, the Chrome to mobile. And you can visit the website to actually have a little look at, at what it actually does. So that's an, a, an explanation of actually what the, the extension does there that you can read. So the extension is added, and it will close down the web store. Now I need to find a page to actually send over to. So let's go to that one. So any page that I'm reading that I want to send over to the, um, the mobile site and read a bit later. So perhaps it's this page I want. It's got some iPad tap tips on it, so maybe it's that page I want to send over. Uh, there is the Chrome to Mobile extension is there, so this page is able to be sent across. This one actually saves it as a bookmark. So I'm going to say, yes, I do want to send it to my phone or tablet. So connect the mobile device. So I'm going to select that, and it's going to give me um, all of my mobile devices, phone, 
or iPad or tablet that it could send to. And the way it knows that you have those is that on each one of those devices I have installed Chrome. So that immediately logs me into Google or because I'm using Chrome, I'm logged into Google. So it knows that I have these three devices. I want to send that page to the iPad. So I'll send it at sense. So I have the page that I'd like to send over to the iPad. Now what I have is um, Chrome browser on the computer on the left, which is I've shrunk a little bit so I can actually see Chrome on the iPad. So if I go out of that, this is the iPad. There is Chrome, the browser. So as soon as I send this web page to uh, the iPad, it should appear immediately in that Chrome browser. So there's the this is the page we want. There's the icon, the extension. I want to send it to the iPad. So I send. And if we look, look at the one on the right, that page is immediately coming up. So it sent that page to the iPad so that I can read that offline. It sent the whole page, the whole thing. I'm scrolling down the whole page. So I think that's very useful. So when you're just looking and surfing on your computer and you're finding pages and you want to read them later, uh, you could also save them as bookmarks. But here's another way.